and it's the first ever virtual con and conference. My name is Hong um Chen Dara, and I am the speaker today. To begin with, I may I request your attention for some of the basic rule functions. One, please mute or unmute yourself when you want to speak or finish your speaking. Two, please turn on your camera if possible. Three, please click raise hand if you have any questions. Four, please rename yourself as given name and family name. For example, Chen Dara Hong. Yeah. And before we move to our agenda today, may I ask everyone for a virtual proposal? If it's okay. If you agree, please turn on your camera and we begin the first virtual proposal together. Okay, let me count from one to three and we can take a photo together. If possible, please turn on your camera so we can see yourself. One, two, three. Okay, one more time. One, two, three. Now, there is another page. Let me take another page of the uh, people here. One, two, three. And now let's free five, everyone. Free, free five, whatever you want. Okay. Yeah, welcome to the fourth at camp. One more. One more. Speaker. One, two, three, any five. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, your cooperation. Now, let me begin our exercise. I'm going to share you my screen. Now, as you can see, this is our okay. agenda, 8 to 8.40. It's a welcome remark, 9 to 9.40. At in breakout session one, 10 to 40 at 10 breakout session two. And there are several topics that you would like to join. Just click on the link and that on the, uh, the file. 10 to 10 30, a presentation by Ms. Emmy. 11 45, the school OG for affliction, actual, actual assessment for large classes by Ms. Tandon. And 12, there's a break. So our ad camp is gonna begin again at 2. 2 at 2.40 and 2 to 2.30, the presentation. Two fifty to 3 to uh, 20, it's a presentation by Mr. Brian. And the last presentation is 3.40. To 420. So in order to get into the presentation or the breakout room that you like, just click on the highlighted or the link embed on the file. And where can you find this agenda? Please go back to your email, which our team sent to you earlier. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and follow our uh, guidelines. Now it's time for me to invite Mr. Heng Jara, the host of our event today, for a short speech. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Dara. Okay. Hey, thank you, Dara, and uh, good morning to all teachers, and also or good evening to teachers from around the world uh, who are joining us today. It's, it's very special for me uh, to welcome you and to be a representative uh, from all our teachers uh, who are helping to organize this uh, force uh, virtual ed camp uh, in Siem Reap uh, from Cambodia. Uh, allow me to confirm that again, this is our first virtual uh, conference and it is the fourth uh, at camp uh, event that we organize in, in, in Cambodia and in Siem Reap. So before I start, uh, I would like to uh, share my screen. So Dara, can you confirm that you can see this now? Okay. Yes. All right. 
So welcome to our force uh, at CAN. So this under the theme of building pathways to distant learning. So we have our six objectives for organizing this event. One is to introduce the technologies to the local teachers. And two, to share the current challenges of teachers in the region during the COVID-19. Three, share the best practices of teaching by participants. Fourth, to share teaching resources during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. Five, to continue professional development. Six is to build a course content for online teaching and effective assessments. So we hope that uh, these objectives will be uh, a gain from the participants. Allow me also to introduce who are the participants today and where they are from. Uh, this is from our Google survey. So I highlighted the three main uh, uh, participants is from uh, the 37.7% of the participants are from secondary uh, school teacher. And the second is from university teachers, that 14.5%. And beside that, one of the three top is the primary school teachers. So these uh, can give us a clue that the teacher who are joining us today, they are from uh, a primary uh, through a higher education. And the total numbers, I'm not sure if you can see at the bottom. Uh, we have, let me hide that. So we have 12 volunteers to organize this event and we have six guest speakers and 69 participants that registered through our Google form, which made in total 87 on the plan. But the event also goes live on our Facebook page. And the numbers of, these are the numbers of our students, uh, of the teachers that teach at each level. Uh, this, is, this survey can tell us the majority of the teacher who teach the students um, below 50 uh, students in a class uh, is the majority of the teacher who join. And the second uh, top uh, number of the students, which is 24.1%, they are the teachers that teach the students uh, more than 140 students uh, for one teacher. So this survey can tell us also uh, the teacher that teach uh, between 50 to 80, uh, one stu 80 students, they are 50% of them who present today. And uh, on top, you might see some of your country. I'm sorry that I cannot list down all the countries of uh, uh, where you are from, from the participants. So we have participants from Cambodia, Thailand, Malaysia, Brunei, USA, Australia, and many more. So allow me to share also, these are the organizing team who made the event happen today. Uh, I can't thank them all enough. So, and thank you for allowing me to talk for them all as well. And this is a supporting uh, uh, institution. So uh, thanks to the community of practice, Simri, and uh, thanks to the Global Channel who uh, uh, provide us computers and laptop and the stable internet from where we are hosting now. And we can't thank enough this, uh, sponsored from the local US Embassy Phnom Penh. So that's it. And I hope you all enjoyed the uh, EdCamp today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Hank. And before I, before inviting Ms. Master and Kitty for the presentation, I would like you to be aware of our microphone. Please turn me. Uh, of the microphone or mute yourself in order to get the better quality of uh, uh, sound. Now, please give a chance for Ms. Kitty Johnson for a short uh, presentation. For everyone, please welcome Ms. Kitty from our admin. Uh, Kitty, you might have to uh, unmute yourself. Uh, that's what I, ah, I did it. I was clicking the wrong icon. So, okay, so, hi everybody. It's um, great to see you all, even if only virtually. For those of you who have 
been to ed camp before so have i um i was there at the very first ed camp and the second and the third and now i'm very happy to be here at the fourth and to get you off to a good start i know it's unusual circumstances and it's making teaching more difficult than it was before right and especially trying to build connections with your students when when you're online and you you don't have that physical presence in the classroom so i hope i can give you a couple of tips today and um just welcome you to um to what I hope is going to be a wonderful ed camp and to congratulate the organizers for doing such a good job on putting this together and letting me see all your faces again. So I have a, uh, a question to start off and somebody's running the poll for me, right? So we have our first poll question, which is, you have the poll question? Do you see that now? first time using Zoom. So I guess uh, we're going to click yes or no. And, and then I'm going to see how many say yes and how many say no. Well, I'll submit my answer, which is no. no now? Yeah, so uh, I don't know where I see the answers though. I'm, show, I'm sharing that to you now. You're sending it to me now. Okay, great. Everyone can see. Now I end the poll and you all did the poll. Yeah, I see. And that's the result. There it is. Ah, so most of you have used Zoom before. That's terrific. 79%. That's a good percentage. Okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm one of those. I have used it before and 21% first time using Zoom. Okay. So it's, um, it's kind of fun. Right, it's one of many platforms and looking at your agenda for the day, I see that you're going to be, somebody has their microphone on. <laughs> I see that you're going to have um, some sessions talking about the different platforms and a lot of them have different availabilities. But my first tip um, is not to get too stressed out about the technology. And I can say that because that's what I just did. About two hours ago, I started getting ready and my iPad was crashing and I had to put things on a different computer. And then I had to send pictures to Dara because I couldn't get them up on my Google file. And, and I was paying so much attention to that that I was losing focus on my lesson. So that's what I wanna encourage you to do throughout today and throughout your online teaching is to not lose focus of the, of the lesson. And if you're having technology problems, everybody's having technology problems, just practice and with, you keep practicing, you keep practicing and it starts getting smoother. Um, and then I have a second poll question, which is how much experience do you have teaching online? Excuse me. Okay. You so should it's no this. experience at all. One week or less, one month or less, three months or less, or more than three months. I used that three months figure because that's about when all of this started. So if you've had more than three months, that means you were teaching online before the pandemic. No. So allow me to share you the result if anybody mm -hmm. has voted. Okay, looks like nobody here is voting. Nobody's voting any at all? Oh, it's voting, yeah, yeah. It's going up, I see. Oh, it's coming up, okay. Let me share you the result. I end the poll. There you go. Okay, so almost a third with no experience. Yeah, and um, not very many who have more than three months. Okay. Okay, very interesting. So today's conference should be very useful for you. I forgot to uh, prepare a question in advance. I wonder, um, if, can we do a hand raising um, of people who are teaching online now? Raise your hand if you're teaching online now. Yes, I mean, they can ra ra raise your hand in the thing. <laughs> Not raise your hand. But <laughs> okay. I don't see the raised hand function on my friend's laptop. But you can click on participants. 
participants. Then, ah. Yeah. And then where's where's the raise hand? Oh, I see. Okay. So I'll raise my hand because I'm teaching online now. Uh, and <laughs> and do I see the raised hands up somehow on the screen? How do we yeah. how do we have you can I see one. I see face. one. I see I see one clap. I see one thumbs. I see two thumbs up. And I don't see any other answers. <laughs> uh, I think to help you organize, I would say about 40 or 50 percent that are teaching online. OK, great. OK, but for practice, let's all do that. Let's go to uh, where it says participants and find the place where it says raise your hand so um, you can know how to do that because that'll be something you'll want to do if you use zoom when you're teaching online you want to ask your students to be able to raise their hand right or answer yes or no or answer some of these questions that go slower or go faster so does everybody see the the raise hand function and uh click yes if you do yes Am I going to see the yeses or just the host? Well, oh, I think we all can see yes. the yes. But I don't see anybody saying yes. Yes. Am I looking in the wrong place? Yes. How about you, Dara? Do you see it? Yes, yes, I do. Where Where should we look to see where the hands are raised? And on my screen, I see yes, like 10 people here say yes, yes on my uh, participant screen. And how how can you how can you tell what what is the how can you tell that they said yes? There is a green uh, circle. Say yes and check on the yes and with the number ten on top. Okay, so maybe only the host sees that because I don't oh, see it at my end. But that's okay because on, yeah, you can oh, I see it. Oh, so you would have to go down and you scroll down and see who's raised their hand. I see. So that would take a couple of extra minutes if you did that. Okay, great. So that's one of the things that you can do. Um, have, have your students raise your hand. Okay. Um, and I want to encourage you also to today reach out in the chat rooms to other teachers who have more experience than you and to set up some kind of a, a separate Facebook page, not like the EdCamp Facebook page, but I mean, separate from that, but like it, where you can go and just discuss online teaching and share ideas and share links to articles. And I see them come up from time to time on Facebook. And if you later share your page with me, I will send you the links as, as I come across them in my circles. No. Um, so let's start, if you, if you have been teaching online for a while, start talking about two basic approaches that it's probably best to combine, and that's the, the synchronous and the asynchronous. So the synchronous teaching happens like this, what we're doing right now. It's live, all the teachers are there, all the students are there, and meeting together sort of like you would in a standard classroom, okay? but without so much of a personal connection. So right now I have um, the gallery view on, but I don't see everybody. I just see um, like 12, I see 12 boxes. So I know there are 30 people here. So I don't, I can't see all 30 people. So it's hard for me to, age right your attention and stuff and so that's why or one of the reasons why our online teaching is more difficult and more challenging than a classroom teaching right because you you can't we call it in the theater call it reading the room right or reading reading the audience so to know when you're going too slow when you're going too fast when students don't understand so um and then another way is the asynchronous when students work at their own pace um, as individuals or in pairs or in small groups and instead of 
direct exchange of information. They can work on projects, maybe make some videos. This is useful because it gives students and the teacher right, more time to reflect and to prepare. Okay. So a good online course will probably be a combination of synchronous and asynchronous activities. Um, and you can use the paradigm of the flipped classroom, which most of you have probably heard of before if you haven't used it, if you've been coming to EdCamp or if you've been joining any of the community of practice activities. So it's students prepare in advance. So they do a reading or prepare some kind of project, come to class ready to discuss it. So asynchronously, they do their reading and then prepare it in, or, or then discuss it in the classroom. Okay. And a, a good example of how you could do that would be, if you're familiar with jigsaw reading, one of my favorite activities, I'm gonna say, uh, are you familiar with jigsaw reading? Click yes. <laughs> and I'm going to see how many of you have clicked Yes, I see. I see a few yeses. I don't know if that's left over from this one or the other one. Um, I will post, I'm going to write myself a note, instructions to jigsaw reading on, um, on your EdCamp community of practice or your EdCamp Facebook page. And then if you form another page just for online questions, I'll post it there also. That involves the students dividing this reading up into say three sections and you have three groups of students. Each group reads a different section and comes to class prepared to discuss it. And then synchronously, you get into breakout rooms like we're going to do later if we have time and share what you read with the other two people and they share with you and you share the reading all together and then report back to the class as a whole. So that's a good something that you can use with combining synchronous and asynchronous teaching. Can we see that first picture? Okay. Is that right, Kitty? No, that's the second picture. Oh. That one? Yes, okay. So here's this chart that I found a few days ago, um, specifically designed for our online teaching. So you want to be as inclusive as you can. And so you cannot have all of your activities be up here in the high bandwidth. So what we're doing now is high bandwidth. That means all of the participants have easy access to really good quality Wi-Fi network. So if you look at the upper right quadrant, that's video conferences and audio conferences. And I have some picture boxes covering the right hand side of that but over on that side, it also says high immediacy. So that means it's happening at the same time. That's synchronous, right? So happening at the same time, high immediacy and requiring high bandwidth. That's the right hand, the upper right hand corner. Um, then if we go down to the, I'm looking for the next one, okay. But that's not available all the time, right? So if we look over at upper left, you have, you still need high bandwidth, but it can be at the student's own pace. So you don't have to be able to have high bandwidth at that particular moment. You can wait until you have better access. And those would include pre-recorded videos instead of a live discussion and asynchronous discussions with video or audio and pre-recorded audios. This would be if any of you have studied the Shaping the Way We Teach English course, either through the embassy or you can find it online. Those videos are available for no charge from the Department of American English. And pre-recorded audio 
I wanted to say specifically, thank you for pointing that out, um, is a project that you can have students do in their own time, for example, make a podcast about a particular topic and share it. And then I'm going to show you another activity with a pre-recorded video that students can do. And you can make that either synchronous or asynchronous. Okay, now if the, in the bottom part of the quadrant, we see the activities that you can do with low bandwidth. With low immediacy, that means you can do them at your own time, with, at your own pace. Um, discussion boards with text images, the old fashioned email. I know nobody was using email anymore when I was in Cambodia two years ago, so I'm sure you're really not using it now. But WhatsApp or other messenger apps that you might be using or readings with text and Im images are all things you can do on your own time and don't require so much bandwidth. And then for more immediacy, you can do collaborative documents and group chat and messaging. Um, I'm going to show you another activity. I'll show you two activities. So the first one will be the next photo. If we can go to the next photo. Yes, this is an activity. Um, we actually tried it recently with a, a group that I belong to. Um, I was recently working in Africa with a Peace Corps and we were supposed to stay until June, but in March they sent everybody back to the US. They evacuated us all and we left in the middle of all of our lessons, but some of us found this activity and tried it with each other. And it's um, a virtual show and tell. We did it synchronously, which kind of went on a, a little long and we weren't really prepared for it. But if you prepare for it in advance, you can do it asynchronously preparation and then show a video of it. And it's ask learners to, this is something that um, American kids do in school from the time they're probably five or six years old. They do show and tell. I don't know if you do it in Cambodia or not, but it's good practice for language. So you learners choose something that's important to them from their home, okay, that they're willing to share. And then have them be ready to answer the questions below. Uh, okay. Just to tell you, uh, because of the extension of the minutes, you still have 13 minutes more. Oh, okay, good, because that was my timer. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and I, think, I think also on your plan is we break out everybody into the breakout room so that they can test also the Zoom function here. Yes, yes, and we're going to do that in just a couple of minutes. So okay. I'll go through this a little. I have about 10 minutes, a little bit more left. 12 minutes. Hmm? You have 12 minutes. 12 minutes, okay, well, I better get moving. Okay, um, so answer these questions. What is the item? Where did you get it? What do you use it for? Why is it important to you? And is there anything else you would like to tell us about this item? And my friend's dog is barking, I apologize. <laughs> He's a very cute dog, <laughs> but... <laughs> um, so you can do that synchronously with everybody um, taking turns during the same classroom or just say, okay, today two people are gonna do show and tell and then the next class two more people are gonna do show and tell. <clears throat> or if you don't have the bandwidth to do that live, you can prepare that in advance and have them prepare their own podcast with visuals for that. Um, another activity, I'm gonna to go to no slide at all now for a minute, just me. Um, is called, um, it's a writing activity. So we can, we can lose the virtual show and tell slide unless people are still looking at it. Yeah. Um, and this is a writing activity and it's, um, it's a teacher student writing conference in a small group. So let's say you have three students 
and they're going to exchange their papers with each other and with the teacher before going online. So this is something that's done away from the classroom at home so that everybody's familiar with the paper. And then get together synchronously and the teacher facilitates a discussion about each paper in turn and um, model how to give feedback so that students can do that themselves eventually and point out areas for improvement. And what Zoom can do is allow you, to, all the students to see the draft at the same time with share screen. And if you use the interactive whiteboard, which I was just playing with the other day, let me find this. Um, if you use the interactive whiteboard, can I share that? Yes, share. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Um, I can write something here, right? Or I can make, if we wanted to, we could make a tic-tac-toe game, right? So, yeah. And then somebody, anybody in the audience, just write something on that, and you'll see that that works also. Maybe Dara. There you go. See, and then somebody else adds something else. <laughs> oh, yeah, and we can type, we can do a stamp, you can do a spotlight. Yeah. So I think that's a really interesting feature that you can type or draw and share with that. So that would be for collaborative writing as well as any kind of uh, game where you needed to use it as a blackboard because it's an interactive board there. So great. Um, okay, let's go. Um, on to your challenges in online teaching. And I have some questions in our next poll about your biggest challenges in online teaching. I want to see how you answer before we go on. One second. So this is big challenges. Okay. It's right there. Yeah. Biggest frustration teaching online is it technology, maintaining student interest, lesson planning, creating and using visuals, providing opportunities for student interaction, assessment, or other. So I'm going to answer right now technology because I just about went crazy this afternoon or the middle of the night for you guys during the technology. So I'm submitting that. So if you all can answer that and submit the answers to the poll. Okay, I see that more than 50% uh, of participants have voted. Okay, so let's see the results then if we have most, yeah. most everyone's voted. More and more people now voted. Oh, good. Hurry up teacher, please vote and submit. Okay, still going on. 70% of the people have voted. 76, 78%. It looks like people right. are still voting. So yeah. I don't end the and, poll yet. Yeah. And you see how Dara is talking there and saying, oh, 78% of the people have voted. So if you do something like this in your classroom, you can see, oh, 78% of the students have responded to my question. And so you need to wait a little bit to make sure that everybody understands. So this is a good way to keep track of what's going on in the classroom. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to share you the result now. Okay. Okay. Technology seems to be the winner. Uh, maintaining student interest important also assessment visuals lesson planning okay and interaction yeah so mostly technology and maintaining student interest great okay so um let's use some technology to maintain student interest for a minute uh, dara is going to organize and put you into um a breakout room. So this is something I just wanted to use to get you familiar with how it works. So we don't have a lot of time. So let's, I was planning on five or six minutes, but let's do two or three minutes. And in the breakout room, um, talk with whoever's in the room with you. You will see when you're assigned about 
one of those challenges that you find is really difficult. And then we'll come back and talk about one of them when we come back. Okay. So, so right now I'm going to break the participants into five rooms and each room mm -hmm. probably they have around nine or 10 people. Mm -hmm. because we have here uh, 48 uh, participants. Terrific. Uh, how many minutes you want them to discuss, Kitty? Um, well, well, we've only got about got six eight minutes, minutes left altogether. We've got six minutes left and let's just discuss for two minutes. Okay. And what are the topics you want them to discuss? Whatever is the, their challenge, their most, the biggest frustration, the poll they just took. Okay. So what poll is, is your frustration in online teaching? Okay. All right, now I will open the, the breakout room and everybody will see on their screen, say joint in a blue button. Please join there. Okay, here you go. And Kitty, you can remain in the main room. You don't have to go into the room. Okay, great. I'll do that. Yeah. Oh, and all our volunteers, please have participate in each of the discussion room that you are there inside the breakout room. All volunteers. Thank you. So we still see uh, Lai Hing. In here, Lai Hing, you can click join. So Paul, Zoom, so so Paul, you can go. Wun Tong as well. You can click join on your screen. Okay. And Mr. Chun Sarit, I'm going to assign you into room one. So please join with them. Oop. Oh, I said I made five rooms, but in fact, I made 10 discussion room. And I oh, hope everybody enjoy with less people so they can talk. Oh, it'll be better with less people in each one. <laughs> yes. Sister Serena, uh, you can be there if you want to. I see Serena here as well. Oh. Now, she's in the main room, not in the breakout room. Okay, Kitty, I see times is up, so I will close the breakout room. Great. And then everybody Great. will come back automatically. You'll see people coming back. Maybe. Yeah. It will be uh, automatically returning. Uh, here they come. Just hope that we have extra minutes uh, in our breakout Zoom. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Right, brother. Okay, okay. Have only two minutes or some part like that. <laughs> so sure. <laughs> okay, so I see um, every, we're all back and some of you still have your um, mics on. So if we can um, mute your mics just for the time okay. being. So we have just a couple of minutes left. So I'm not going to get to all the tips that I had, but I will post them on the EdCamp page. And um, I just want to ask one more question that's it's not for a poll, but what, how often do you think if you have an online class, how often do you need to break from teacher talk to have some kind of interaction that's either a poll like we had or a raise your hand or an answer yes no or a breakout room or um some other kind of question and answer thing some kind of interaction how often and you can put in the check box anybody who has an answer 
Oh, I saw only two minutes for the breakout room. Yes, it is too short. You are very right. But because this is only a 30 minute introductory session, I just wanted to introduce you to the idea to how it works. So now you know how it works. And when you have a real breakout room, yes, of course you want it longer than two minutes. <laughs> this was just to get you acquainted with the idea. Right, Kitty, yes. uh, I think because your time remaining is very short, you want to allow one question or two questions? Well, I, I wanted an answer to the question how, first, and then I'll have a question. But how often do you think you need to pause in your teacher talk to have some kind of interaction, like a breakout room or a poll or a question answer or a raise hand or just some right. kind of interaction? Yeah, I can, Every, read, I can read for you here, Kitty. Uh, somebody here that say Martha Oz. Austin said every 10 minutes, I think students uh, need to interact. Okay, yeah. I think at, at the very minimum, 10 minutes, because we all know, yes, yeah, students start getting bored after 10 minutes and really after 15 minutes. And I read someplace this week that some trainers, some professional trainers say every four minutes. I think four minutes might be a little on the excessive side, but, but better every four minutes, right, than every 20 minutes. So. You know, I would try for every, sometimes every 10 minutes, sometimes every five minutes, but yes, do have some kind of interaction thing, such as the ones that we used here as often as possible. And keep your class limited to 30 to 45 minutes because then you lose everybody. It's really difficult teaching online. And, and yeah, and we'll have one question and then I'll wish you good luck for the rest of your conference. Okay, so I would like to open up a question. So if any teacher have questions, uh, uh, please unmute yourself and uh, and talk. Maybe, yeah, raise your hand first and then I can call you up for uh, talking. Thank you, teacher. Does anybody have a question? Um, may I have a question, please? Yes, please, uh -huh. teacher. Okay, so I actually like to figure out some features available on Zoom as well, but I see you use the poll feature. I don't know how we can enable that because that way also we also can collect the, uh, the, the information from students. All right. Isn't that a terrific feature? Yeah, and Dara will be able to explain more about how that works, right? But you can get that on the free form of Zoom, right? You just Actually, no, you can't get it on a free account. You have to account. pay for it, on okay. You have to pay, yes. Okay. Yeah. But you can use the raise hand and yes, no on the free account. You can use everything the same as a pro account, except this poll. Except for the poll. Except for the poll. Right. right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And yeah, the poll is great, isn't it? Yeah. It, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, allow me to explain also to some of the participants things that the breakout room is the EdCam rooms for the moment. No. Mm -hmm. uh, with the two next uh, sessions, you all will experience the real fresh ad camp discussion. So our MC will explain to that. So this is a plenary uh, session by Kitty and she is our former uh, English language fellow from the local US embassy and she was our teacher trainer who formed our COP in Simbri. So we are very honored to have her talk today just for 30 minutes of her time and it is at the night time now in the US. Yeah, it's night time here now. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but it so was great to see all your faces again. One question Love already. Yeah. Well, I hope I can come back soon. Yes, really, really true. All right. So um, does anybody have another question maybe if you have or be before we let Kitty go? Okay, I click around page uh, one and page two. I don't see anybody ask any more question. Okay. I think that's all Kitty. I uh, would like to say thank you so much. Uh, for your present uh, today. And uh, I will uh, hand, all, hand over a microphone to Dara, the MCs, to uh, take over his responsibilities. Okay, great. And let me know. Um, I hope I encourage you to form a separate group for online collaboration and uh, question and answer and supporting each other and invite me to join that. And I can send you some tips that I found that we didn't have time for this morning. Thank you, Tees. Okay, bye. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. She has a good night. <laughs> yeah, good night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sleep well then. Okay. Okay. Bye. Good wow. night, Dara, please give us the instruction yeah. for the next session. Well, please. Yeah.
Teachers, ladies and gentlemen, let me please uh, move on to our next agenda. It's going to be breakout session. And let me show you how to join our breakout session. I'm going to share you my screen. And this is our next agenda. At camp discussion rooms or breakout session one. In this breakout session, we have five interesting topics. Uh, for example, topic one, teaching with technology, topic two, and topic five. So please vote for yourself, which one do you like or which one is the most interesting for you. And remember each room, there's only 40 minutes for discussion. In each room, there are two people or two volunteers to be your facilitators. And uh, for me and teacher Lighting will be in uh, topic one. So if you are interested, just go back to the agenda sent to you through our emails and click on the highlight link here, join the discussion and you will be there. If you have Excuse any questions or difficulties, Dara? please uh, let us know. Excuse me, Dara. Uh, participant requests you to speak louder. Thank you. Okay. So, so this is our agenda for the next 40 minutes. And uh, this is the EdCamp discussion rooms. If you are interested in any topics, please click on the link for example, here you join the discussion, there's a link to the Zoom meeting ID. And before you click on, please follow the instruction fully, which topic you are interested in. And uh, for the discussion, there are 40 minutes. And after that, you will be moved to the next session at 10, at 10 a.m. And, and again, there are five interesting topics for you as well. So please click any topic that you like and move to the next uh, discussion room. So any questions before we move to the uh, breakout session? It's very good. I saw somebody raise up the hand before. Could you just unmute yourself to ask Dara at this time, please, teacher? Yeah. Um, nobody asking any question. Uh, I also wrote there. So can you maybe you stop share a little bit and see if anybody uh, want to show up or raise their physical hand to ask question before we break out. Otherwise, maybe people get confused, can't get into the discussion room. Yeah, Miss uh, Teacher Leo uh, Salazar, please. <laughs> Very good, Salazar, yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, I can't seem to click on the link. How do, how do you do that? Okay, so let me show you, uh, teacher. So when you go to okay, the agenda, you. when you click on the link, for example, here, join, for example, you are interested in topic one, click join the discussion, and we be automatically send you to uh, the, the Zoom meeting, just open and join. Because right now I cannot join because we are having a meeting with the, our plenary session. So when you end the meeting, you can get back to the link and click on it. Is that clear, teacher? We we uh, just to add, we recommend you to uh, download the Zoom application into your computer or to your device so that it works. I'm using I, yeah, I'm using Chromebook. Uh, I can't. It works. Um, yeah, so maybe it's not possible for me to join uh, from a Chromebook, a Chrome extension. It's possible. It's possible. Okay. For Chrome we channel click on the button click on join session and then you will be in you can use the web version okay uh, mobile version also yeah all versions okay all right I'll, I'll try again thank you Roma okay. okay so it's time for us to end our meeting and leave uh, you can leave the meeting and join our discussion uh, discussion room please vote on your feet Thank you so much and see you soon. I have to leave now to prepare for my room. Mm. I will leave the, uh, the plenary room for Mr. Darohen to facilitate. See you soon. Uh, bye -bye. Excuse All right, thank me, you so teacher. Much. Excuse me. Oh, yes. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, teacher, I just don't know how to join another meeting. I, I, I didn't get it. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you in this case. Now, I know uh, it might be a difficult section for you all. Uh, 
I imagine you are on your agenda. You see my agenda in your in front of your screen. Yes. Okay. Uh, if you yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. if you have registered with this at camp session, you normally receive one email about our yeah. final agenda like that. So as teacher Dao already already mentioned, you yeah, look at yeah. the session now from nine o'clock to nine forty. See if you are interested in any of yeah. the topic. You click on this uh, link. You see, when I click, yeah. it will lead me to another page because we already uh, embedded the meeting link room in there, over there. And when it okay, goes, I see, 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 will ask see, you, okay. you whether launch here or you want to download and run it on Zoom application. So you can choose here or choose there. It works. Yeah. We don't set any password, so you yeah, all yeah, should yeah, be yeah. automatically in that room where you choose. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other question that I could help, please? Okay. Okay. Thank you, teacher. I'm clear now. Perfect. And yes, if you're ready, please go to your uh, discussion room according to your topic. And I would request all volunteers, please go into your room and set that up and leave the participant here if they need help. I can help. And any questions? Please make a phone call to uh, uh, to me or on the with the number that we already sent by the email, or message it uh, message to us on our EdCam Facebook page. So we will try the best to help you uh, as we go today. Okay. Yeah, all volunteer, please go. I see the message. Please go volunteer. You don't have to be here. It's your turn to host your meeting room from uh, nine o'clock to nine forty. Uh, discussion uh, room of session one for yourself. Okay, so all teachers, uh, you can leave this this meeting now. It's it's end it's ended for this uh, open and uh, plenary sessions. Please leave and please always have your agenda uh, with you in order to continue your journey for today. Teacher, yep. I have a question now. Uh, how, how can we get the link to join the, the new room? Okay, have you registered with EdCamp's uh, uh, registration? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you should have your email, but does, uh, it doesn't matter. Now I can send you this okay. uh, file as well, so you can go and get, um, you can get it. So we, we have to lay out this room and then we, we join exactly. the new one, right? Okay. Exactly. Uh, let me you. give you let me give you again the final agenda of our edcam and you will have it also over there um, can't find it okay it should be here sorry have to copy this out it's on the internet. This is the agenda. Okay. All right, you should have this now. I sent it. It's on inside the chat box. Yeah. It's inside the, the chat box. So please download that file and you can just open a computer and click on the hibernated link over there and you will be there into the session that you want to. Okay. So I will keep this meeting on in case if anybody still uh, need help. Give me one second. Teacher the wrap, please. One time on the phone already. Please help there. Someone that room number three is locked with password, so could you please help?
Okay, uh, Wanta, have you solved that problem of room three? Hello, teacher. Yes, yes, teacher, teacher, TV. Uh, uh, I want to join a topic three, communicate to uh, teaching English, but it requires password, meeting password, and I can't find anywhere, so. Okay. Let me check with our members a little bit. This is room three, right? Yes, teacher. Okay, let me ask, ask everybody. Um, uh, I'm asking them to give me the link because um, it might be blocked. Just hold on one second, teachers. Thank you. Yeah, we need to link here. It's really good that I kept this link on. Yep. And who's taking care of that? Just give me one second. I will go to find them in the room and see what happened. Oh, 
Hello, Bondra, can you hear me? Lu lu gu lu gu sa ban lu yes. Okay chang ban chao ban chang chao ban chang kun. Lu gu nei khnong ni chi main meeting room eh. This is a main meeting room. So right now you all should go to uh, the breakout session. Chang okay. Ba nei lu gu nei nhom chia pha nang tai nong tiet. Lu gu click lu pha dai nei khnong chat box lu gu. Hay là cho từ hai bên này thiết link đang tới. Những người vừa lên chia already turn on their meeting room.
teacher Dara. Yep. I still can't join a room uh, topic three communicate to English team. Okay. Requires um, password, so. Oh, oh, sorry. We check the chat box name down, my dear. Okay, let me try. We check chat box now. Okay, my dear. We do change the Zoom name. Zoom three. Hi, Bondara. Hello, Hi. yes. But, but uh, I can't join the topic one. Is it the topic one? Can you you check the topic one? One second. Yeah, thank you. But, but let me uh, go here. Yeah. Okay, I can't talk because I'm helping the people here. Chat in room four. Topic one. Copy a link. Click topic one, let's go. Okay, okay, let us try. But with the password on it. Eh? 